Hey, what's up? I'm Matt, and I've helped tens of thousands of people build rewarding careers as independent property insurance adjusters. And if you like this video, it's actually a part of a weekly live stream that we do for our fast track to deployment certification students. And you know, I thought this presentation was so good that I decided to give it away for free as a preview for FTD. You can watch this entire training uncut and without interruption right now for free at adjustertvplus.com slash programs slash hail yes. And if you're ready to get priority onboarding at the major I firms, let's get you signed up for fast track to deployment. Just go to adjustertv.com slash certify. All right, let's get into it. Hail damage, right? Our favorite thing as adjusters, whether we're in the field or we're at the desk, hail damage and, and roofs, and to some degree, wind damage as well, is something that is, uh, once you get it, it's like, it's it's pretty easy. It's, it's kind of fun, probably the funnest claims that you'll do. <clears throat> but if you're new to it, if you haven't done any of this kind of thing, if you haven't, you know, you haven't gotten like immersed in like what hail damage is versus other things that you could find on the roof, you know, what does hail damage, you know, look like versus like an old roof or, you know, other stuff, right? Um, this, I, I, I want this to be kind of like a sort of a, uh, maybe not fully comprehensive, but as much as I can do in an hour or so um, to cover all of the aspects of, you know, kind of the basics of how hail is formed and, uh, what it does to shingles, how shingles are made, kind of the basic anatomy of shingles. And then well, I'll just go down my little list here. What old roofs look like, right? Shingle defects, what do those look like, you know, versus hail, poor installation, you know, how does that impact what the roof looks like and how long it's going to last. Um, heat damage to roofs, which is very common because the roof usually, you know, gets pretty hot, especially in the, even in the wintertime, but especially in the summertime, wear and tear, uh, stuff that grows on the roof, on shingles, moss, lichen, algae, things like that. Um, wind damage, we're gonna, I'm gonna touch on wind damage and the different types of wind damage to composition shingles. And the vast majority of this is to composition shingles. We're gonna look at some vents and look at spattering and kind of have a discussion about vents and, you know, soft metal and all that kind of stuff. And then go through kind of a walkthrough of what real hail damage is and uh, what sort of distinguishes that from any other possible thing that you could find on the roof. And this is the thing that makes hail damage easy is that hail damage is, is really only one thing, right? There's a lot of things that kind of look like it, but real hail damage is, has a handful, a small handful of, of attributes that are always need to be there in order for it to be considered hail. And finally, we're gonna look at fake hail damage. Um, James Mathis sent me a whole bunch of pictures. Um, I guess there's some guys running around in North Carolina or South Carolina, wherever he's at. Hammer hail, right? Um, taking a quarter or a rock and grinding it into the shingle, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that stuff as well as some things that, if you guys do a, a Google search, this is the problem with, little problem with Google, is that if you do a Google search for hail damage, uh, in like and look at the images or whatever you're going to get a lot of contractors and storm chasers that are showing pictures of stuff that's not hail damage and saying does your roof look like this well you need a new roof call your insurance company well you know we'll represent you we'll fight for you whatever right so we're gonna talk about that all right so without further ado um tony james corey charles i see we have nine five four and one here as well great to see you're smiling you know picture of a phone. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, I'm going to kind of do this a little bit fast and loose. I have a whole bunch of pictures that I want to go through. Okay, so the basics of uh, a hail event, right? You have a big thunderstorm, right? And it's usually pretty intense storms. They generally happen between the front range to all the way over to the east coast but the, the places that get the most hail are going to be where um, cooler moist air from the pacific runs into let's see is that right runs into to uh or maybe it's dry air 
from that's that's come over like the southwest and the and the west uh, that runs into moist this is it, it runs into moist hot air from the gulf right and there's, there's, there's something called the texas dry line um, which generates a lot of the weather in the, the midwest and the east um, so when those kind of things kind of mix together it usually happens in the springtime starting in the spring but it can happen anytime um, you know you get cold and warm things coming together with moisture and dryness and whatever then you're gonna you know I'm not a meteorologist, so don't look to me for science information, <laughs> but the basics of it are that you can get very strong thunderstorms, and these will generate high winds, uh, pouring rains, they can generate tornadoes, they can generate um, derechos, which are straight line winds, and they can also generate hail and different varieties of hail. I'm not going to go deep on like all the different kinds of hail that you might run into, um, but to summarize that point, you can have hail of all different sizes also be of all different hardnesses. So you can have hail that's like clear glass, hard, bounces when it hits the ground. You know, it's going 75 miles an hour or 55 miles an hour or whatever terminal velocity is. It can be also any size and like a snowball, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It just splash and splatter on everything. Um, you can have hail that's driven by wind higher than for terminal velocity and in some cases i've seen hail damage caused by very small very hard hail uh, that was blown by very very high 85 plus mile an hour winds um, and it just absolutely shreds the side of the house or the, you know you can look at drive down the street and see which side the storm came from really easily sidings hanging off in little pieces and you can see black spots all over the roof even from like one you know three quarter inch hail one inch hail smaller hail can if it's really really it's hard and if it's driven by wind it can cause a lot of damage right so you can you're, you're see a lot of variety of things um basically the way hail forms is that you have uh, in these thunderstorms, these big towering, you know, the thunderhead st type storms, they have these updrafts that will um, blow moisture and dust and things like that up into the middle of the, the thunderstorm, high up into the atmosphere where it's, it's um, below freezing and in a lot of cases below zero, depending on how high you go. And the piece of, you know, dust might collect a little bit of moisture, freeze, and then fall a little bit pick up a little bit more moisture, get blown up, freeze, drop, freeze, drop, you know, be blown up, drop, and so on, in kind of a loop until it gets big enough to where it's too heavy, gravity overcomes the wind, and it falls out of the, the cloud, right? And depending on how strong the storm is, that typically dictates on how big the hailstorm can get. Because if, if the wind is really, really, really strong, and the updrafts are very, very, very strong, it can blow you know, two, three, four, five, seven, eight inch hail back up into the top of that cloud when it finally falls in the middle of nowhere, Texas or in Nebraska or whatever, it goes right through grandma's, you know, living room ceiling and lands in the middle of her TV, right? That kind of thing absolutely does happen. And there are, you will have, not not often, but you may be, encounter a hail storm where you're paying for TVs and furniture and stuff like that because the, the storm made it opening, right? And the hail went all the way through the roof, all the way through the, the, the decking, all the way through the insulation and the drywall and the ceiling, and into the, insur the inside of the insurance house. Not often, not common, but it absolutely does happen. And it's uh, it makes those claims a lot more complex um, and not as easy to do because you got a lot you got a lot of interior damage with those. Typically, you're not going to get a lot of uh, interior damage with regular hail because three quarter inch plywood, even half inch plywood is more than strong enough to stand up to all but like the heaviest, hardest hail. Um, there have been a few occasions where I've seen hail that was hard, hard enough and heavy enough and probably being blown as well that makes dents or divots in plywood, but it's not very common, right? The, the, it's a, a little bit of a myth that um, you have hail damage, your roof's going to leak. I've seen people, I've gone to people's houses and seen hail, and we're going to see some pictures of this later. Um, gone to people's houses and seen five, eight year old hail damage. The roof looks terrible, but they don't have any, I'm like, you got any leaks? Well, everything's fine. It hasn't leaked. So we just thought it was fine. Right. Um, 
It absolutely can cause a leak, but generally it doesn't because underneath the shingle, you're going to have felt, which is also water resistant. So when hail hits a shingle, right, and this is this picture here is, is, is supposed to look like a shingle. Um, you can kind of see it says asphalt, and then there's the matting. Um, and then there's more asphalt. I think as far as like a real shingle goes, the matting is going to be thicker than the asphalt. The asphalt is a coating, and we'll talk about this here in just a second, but it's a coating on the bottom and on the top of the matting of the shingle, which is these days is fiberglass. And then a granular layer is, in, is sort of installed, like pressed into the top of that. Um, but what a hailstone does is that it will... Um, if it's big enough and if it's hard enough and it's coming down hard enough, it will, when it hits the shingle, it will make a kind of, we call it a bruise, um, but it makes kind of like a little dent, right? And that's sort of the, and this is going to be coming up a lot in this, so this is important. The fundamental feature of a hail impact that differentiates it from almost everything else that you're going to find on, on any given roof is that where that little arrow is, um, that, that torn matting right there, right? Um, that, me that makes that f all that fiberglass matting and the asphalt and the granules and everything else, it, it makes a soft spot. It's like if you drop an apple off the table and it kind of flattens one side of it, and it, you know, if you leave it on the counter for a few hours or whatever, it can soften up, right? That is almost exactly what a real hail, hail hit can feel like is like. And it's obviously not wet and it doesn't taste very good, but it'll be a soft spot, right? That soft spot's the thing that you're, the main thing that you're looking for when you're looking at hail damage. And this is why drone stuff doesn't always fit the bill. And why they get a lot of false positives and false negatives is because the drone doesn't have fingers. You can't go down and feel that spot. It can see spots. Right, and I'm going to show you some spots that look like hail damage. I'm going to show you a lot of spots that look like hail damage, that would fool a drone, but that are not hail damage. Right, and it's cost, it costs the insurance company a lot of money. Um, and the other thing is, is that the flip side is that the a lot of times you'll have these soft spots and they'll be barely visible. Only a few granules are knocked loose, but you take your finger and you, you push it into the roof, and you can def, you can easily feel that soft spot. Right, and that's a bruise, and that counts. And we're we're buying that. We're, we're counting that as into our our test square anyway. You know, if we get enough of those, then we're then we're totaling that slope. Um, here's another picture. So, what if there was one place, one huge and expanding library of property claims adjusting training videos showing you how we do what we do? What if there were also complete Xactimate certifications as well as the latest and most up to date Xactimate mobile training? It's real and you can get started for free binging all the desk and field claims adjusting training vids you can stand right now at adjustertvplus.com. Think of it kind of as a virtual ride along. Same basic deal, right? Um, indentation causes crack in asphalt and fiberglass. You could say that um, it can tear it. Fiberglass is is rippable, right? And it's not it's not like a really rigid thing. So roof shingles are not rigid. Um, so this is kind of the basics of a, of a fiberglass shingle. The top thing here that they have the granular surface layer on the very top is designed to. Uh, protect the rest of the shingle from the elements for a period of time. That's why a roof has like a, a warranty rating. Like they say, well, this is a 25 year, this is a 50 year roof, right? That depends on the quantity and thickness of granules that are installed on top of the shingle on the, on the, uh, on the matting, right? The matting itself, that kind of silver white th layer right there is impregnated on both sides with asphalt. So I, I think it's a little bit of a misnomer to kind of say that it's there's a it's a layer or whatever it's a coating, right? And it gets into the the fiberglass. Um, the granules stick to one side of that, and on the other side, um, there's they make it they they put some kind of a chalk or whatever on it so that it doesn't stick to, they don't stick to themselves, and then they have that seal strip that has like a plastic thing on it. You rip off that, and it it seals it down to the bottom. The next shingle underneath it right but the basics of it are really you've only got two main parts of 
a shingle and you've which is the the matting which is again these days always going to be fiberglass that's impregnated or coated i guess you could say it gets into it into that matting on both sides uh, with asphalt um, which you know is a petroleum product so it's got carbon and sulfur and whatever else is in petroleum products, maybe a little small amount of moisture is in there, you know, a certain percentage of moisture content. So the matting and then the granules, it's the two things. The granules are designed to shed with weathering, right? That's why there's granules on there, okay? Because freeze and thaw, people walking on it when they install it, people walking on it to, to do work on the roof, birds walking on it, right? All of these things are going to knock a granule loose here and there, and it's going to end up down in the gutters. Small hail, right? Hitting the roof, knocking the granules out um, is part of the way the shingle is engineered. Okay. This is important because you're going to get into this. This is something that's going to come up with the contractors. The shingles are just, are engineered to handle up to a certain size of hail. It's only when the matting itself is damaged by the hail that that shingle is considered to have to be compromised, to lose its water shedding ability to whatever, right? To, to, to be degraded to the point to where it needs to be replaced, okay? Super important. Um, the granules, just seeing granular loss, it does not, it's not, it's not, not even necessarily an indication that, that there was hail, okay? Um, because you can have um, a roof that's five years old in the north, right? We'll say Minnesota, and it's gone through several freeze-thaw freeze cycles. And then, you know, kind of mild summer storms. It doesn't you know, All the storms kind of go around it or whatever. This, this roof doesn't really get hit very much. They do a little bit of work on the roof. They install some solar panels or they're putting siding on a dormer or whatever. And you guys are walking around on it. And then on the sixth year, they have a huge, just a, just a gully washer, right? Lots of, lots of small little hail or maybe no hail at all. Um, and maybe a couple of neighborhoods over, they got some hail, but a bunch of rain. Rain's going to wash those granules down to the gutter, and they're going to end up in the, their, the downspouts. And, well, you know, I mean, we were in, then thought everything was fine until we saw all the grit in the downspouts. And so we figured we'd better call it. And, in, and then the roofer came by, and he said, we definitely had hail damage because of all the granules in the downspouts and they're in the gutters. they got to have a bruise, okay? And we're going to talk about this later and to learn about roofing materials and what old roofing looks like i'll see you in the next video right here